Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on legacy graphical numbers. And in this one, you have an integer n, and you want to turn all the numbers in the range 1 to n sorted in lexicographical order, and you must write it in linear time in O1 space. And so this is the answer for 1 and 2. And so basically, the thing for lexicographical order is turn your number into a string and compare them. So if I have string 1, 0, and I have string 2, um, one zero comes first because lexicographical is you compare characters at the same index and if one is smaller then that string is automatically first so in this case you'd compare the one and the two and because the one is smaller one is shorter and also a blank is better than anything else so like if you compare these two the first character is the same so you compare the second one and the second character is a zero and here's a blank so this would come first so that's why things like 11 come before seven because you compare the first one and the seven and seven is later and so let's just notice something. Let's say n's like a million. Um, then let's look at the first couple numbers here. So actually the first couple numbers would be one, then 10, then 100, then 1,000, then like it would keep going like this. So this would be the first like, um, what? Two, four, seven numbers. Because one and any other digit is bigger than any of these. Like 12 is bigger than any of these. Two is bigger than any of these because two is bigger than one and so on. So the basic thing you can recognize from just taking a big number is ideally, so the next number in the sequence is the previous number times 10. So ideally we want to just multiply our number by 10 and we want to keep doing that. But let's say, let's say n is like 45. Um, so basically our first few numbers would be like 1, 10. And now we can't multiply by 10, right? Because 100 is out of range. So what happens if we can't add, we can't um, like multiply by 10? Like what, what other operation could we do? Well, the other operation we could do, like, like in the sequence, what would be the next number actually? So the, the other operation we can do is we can add. So, right, so the next number here would actually be 11. So we can say, let's try this too. Try to add if we can't multiply by 10. Because multiply by 10 is always better because it would put a zero in this digit. Adding is a little bit worse, but it's not that bad because you would add a very small number. You add, you add the next smallest number. Um, but so let's see what happened here. So basically this sequence would be 1, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, kind of like this, right? But now what happens um, when we try to add, like, like if we keep trying to add, here we get a 20. And do we want a 20? We don't actually want a 20 because two is smaller than 20. So we have to make a rule here. So we make a little asterisk. We can't add to a multiple, or not a multiple, to a number that ends with nine. Because if we do that, then it will basically change another digit. So in that case, like how do we continue here? Like what, what is the next number? So the next number is actually two. And then you do the same thing, like two, 20, 21, 23, and so on. But how do we go from a 19 to a two? Well, we can actually just divide by 10, right? Um, yeah, we can divide by 10 and then we can we can keep going, right? So we can take this 19, divide by 10, floor divide and get a one and then add one. So we can say that. So we can say basically, if we can't add one, if we can't add one, because either we're gonna get past n or the number ends with nine because of above, or n plus or num like our current number plus one is greater than n, then we can just divide by ten until we can and add one. And the reason you have to divide by ten until you can, because imagine your number is like two nine 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 nine. You can't just like divide by ten and then add one, because that also changes the digit. So you'd have to basically like actually, if you think about it, let's say we have this number, the number after this number should just be three. So that's kind of the idea. So we're gonna take our number, we're gonna divide by 10 until we no longer have a nine here, and then we can add one. So we, we take our 19, divide by 10, get a one, and then we can just add one, so we get 11. Or actually, sorry, uh, we get we don't get 11, right? We get one plus one, we get two. And then we kind of do the same thing. So we try to multiply by 10, we can, 
Can we multiply by 10 again? No, we can't. So then we'll try to add. We can. And then same kind of thing, right? So 21, 22, 23, 24, um, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And then same kind of thing. We, we have a nine, so we have to divide. So we get two, then we'll just add one, so we get three. And then same thing, 30 through 39, and then 40 through 45. And that's basically the pattern. So I, the best operation is multiply by 10. The second best operation is add. But if we can't do anything, then we have to divide by 10 until we can. And that will guarantee us the, all the numbers we need. And so it's basically like a depth first search type of thing where you're basically just saying like, how do I go back from like, how do I go back from a number to a previous number? Um, and the thing you really care about is all the digits before the digit that you have. And to get rid of that digit you have, just divide by 10. Um, you can also do this recursively. It makes a lot more sense where you can just like have a current number you're at and add digits, but then that wouldn't be a one space. So yeah, so let's code that. So uh, let's see. So we're just gonna have this thing start with a one and then we're always just gonna take the last number and do something with it. So we can just say like list integer. And then we'll say result add one. And then we'll say while the result size is less than n, let's keep doing this stuff. So our current number will be result add index last. And if current times 10 is less than or equal to n, let's do that. So add cur times 10 and continue. And then if we can add, we can add, but we have to remember to add, we have to make sure that our number, um, in order to add, we have to make sure that the number plus one uh, is not bigger than n or yeah. And the number can't end with a nine. So we can have a while loop to just keep dividing until we have that condition. So we could say while current um, mod 10, does not equal nine, or actually it does equal nine, or current plus one is greater than n. Let's just keep dividing by 10. And now we're gonna, ha we're gonna have a valid number because if this is not true, then we can just add current plus one. So this will basically keep going until this thing's full. And then we can return. Yeah, and there we go. So hopefully that makes sense. The basic, the, the hardest part of this problem is basically, you know, how do I go from like this to this and recognize all I have to do is just divide by 10 and add one and so on and so on. So if you draw, if you draw this out for bigger numbers, then you'll see these patterns. And for like the million, you see that it's like one, 10, 100 and so on. So you want to get a good idea of how like the graphical stuff works. Um, yeah, so this is, we're just taking a current number and modifying, so that's, linear and we just have our result array so uh, linear or constant because we're basically just taking the last number and then transforming it to get the next number and so on and so on um yeah i think that's going to be it so hopefully this was helpful if it was please like the video and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching